Good afternoon, and welcome to the installation ceremony for national officers of the American Legion Auxiliary. Please welcome your national president, Mary Davis. Thank you. The meeting of the 97th Annual National Convention will now come to order. Today, we are assembled for the installation of the 2017-2018 newly elected officers. This is a special day for a proud Department of Wisconsin. We will witness the installation of Diane Ducek as the 97th American Legion Auxiliary National President. It is also a special day for the Department of Mississippi. Their member, Kathy Dungan, will be installed as our national vice president. It is now, it is now my honor to present the installing officer for the ceremony, past national president, John Povemacher Ryan from the Department of Wisconsin. Thank you, Madam President, and good afternoon. It's a very special privilege, and it's with a great deal of pride that I welcome everyone to the installation of Diane Dushek from the Department of Wisconsin as National President and the National Officers and Department Presidents who will serve with her this year as we begin a new year of service for God and country. Participants in this afternoon's program are the following. Sergeants at Arms Patricia Smith and Virgie Kotal, past department presidents, Department of Wisconsin. Color bearers for the flags of the Department of Wisconsin are Bonnie Dorniak, Executive Secretary Treasurer, and Sixth District President Nancy Helms, both from the Department of Wisconsin. The soloist for today is Loretta Shellman, past department president, also from the Department of Wisconsin. The installing chaplain is past, past National President Linda Newsom. I'm sorry, this afternoon we are going to have uh, a, a, someone that has to fill in because our Linda Newsom unfortunately land, ended up in the hospital this week too. So it will be Diana Cervino from the Department of, Wis, of Wisconsin who will also be giving the Pledge of Allegiance. And the MC Joyce Endress, past department president from Wisconsin, Diane's campaign manager and a good friend. We are also asking this, we will also be installing this year Kathy Dungan as, first, as the Vice President from the Department of Mississippi. Members of the audience, I ask that you please remain seated as I ask the Sergeant at Arms to bring forward the incoming National Vice President Kathy Dungan from the Department of Mississippi, escorted by Chief Master Sergeant Angela M. Duncan, U.S. Air Force, past department commander and serving this year as the department president of Mississippi.
Would you all please rise as the colors of the Department of Wisconsin are presented. Please be seated. It is with great delight that I ask you to welcome the national president for the two year 2017-18, Diane Dushek, escorted by Joni Dickerson, retired U.S. Navy as a chief petty officer and presently serving as first vice president of the Department of Wisconsin. The opening prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Diana Siravina, past department president from the Department of Wisconsin. Dear Heavenly Father, we welcome you to this celebration of our newly elected officers of the American Legion Auxiliary. May you keep watch over them as they guide our organization to great accomplishments as we care for our veterans, our military, and all our families. Please assist the leadership in their deliberations for the good of our entire membership. Thank you, God, for the blessings you have bestowed on our American Legion family and our friends. Thank you for all the days we have had together in service to our nation and to thee. Thank you for teaching us that we can do not great things, but we can do small things with great love. 
Watch over all our members, but particularly these newly elected officers, and especially grant your grace to our national president, Diane, that she will travel with safety and know the peace of your love, as she sometimes may grow weary with her duties and will need your sustaining guidance and comforting presence. In your holy name we pray, amen. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you, Diana. Would you please welcome Loretta Shellman, past department president of Wisconsin, singing It's a Wonderful World. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day and the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They are really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than we'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. We love our American veterans and all their families too. It is service, not self, and it doesn't matter who. They have kept us all safe. We are grateful, it's true. We'll always serve them. It's the least we can do. Yes, we'll always honor all that they gave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. She not only has a beautiful voice, but she added those two extra stanzas. It was a surprise for our incoming national president. Here with a special reading is Rita Navarrete, past national president, Department of New Mexico, reading Reflections from Archbishop Oscar Romero, A Step Along the Way. It helps now and then to step back and take that long view. No, I am. We accomplish in our lifetime only a fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete. No statement says all that could be said. No program accomplishes the mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. 
That is what we are about. We plant seeds that will one day grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold the future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are the workers, not the master builders. We are the prophets of a future not our own. Thank you, Rita. Diane, it is a personal privilege to share this day with you. We have shared many events over the past years, but none has been more significant or exciting than today. I can assure you that this year will be filled with delight and much satisfaction. You will find joy in surprising places, and your life will be enriched by these happenings with newfound friends and memories to last a lifetime. Would the newly elected national officers pre please rise to take your oath of office? The members of the American Legion Auxiliary have entrusted you with great responsibility. You have been elected to provide guidance in the activities of our organization. You will familiarize yourself with the duties of your respective offices. Always remember that the welfare and success of this organization depends upon you. Every American Legion Auxiliary member assumes the obligation of preserving the integrity of both the American Legion and the American Legion Auxiliary, contributing to the aims and purposes of our organizations. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me, giving your name where I give mine. I, Jan Pulver Ryan, promise to perform faithfully all the duties of the office I'm about to assume. And I further pledge that I am not a member of and do not subscribe to the principles of any group opposed to our form of government. You may lower your hands and be seated. Department presidents, would you please rise? President Diane, please come forward and give the oath of office to these department presidents who will be serving with you this year. Please raise your right hands. I, Diane Dushak, promise to perform faithfully all the duties of the office I am about to assume. And I further pledge that I am not a member of and do not subscribe to the principles of any group opposed to our form of government. You may lower your hands. Congratulations.
Congratulations, Department Presidents. I hope you have a wonderful year. You, the members of the American Legion Auxiliary, have chosen outstanding officers to lead us this year. I have charged them with a serious responsibility, and I likewise charge you. Would all the members of the American Legion Auxiliary please stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I solemnly promise to renew my pledge of service to the American Legion Auxiliary and to give wholehearted support to these newly elected officers. Thank you. Please remain standing as I ask the rest of the audience to rise as well for a prayer by our installing chaplain, Diana Seravino. Keep ascending the mountain of cheerfulness by daily scattering seeds of kindness along the way as best as you can. And should the mist hide the mountaintop, continue undaunted and you will reach the sun-tipped heights of your own life experience. Dear Lord, please guide our new officers in their quest to scatter their seeds of kindness as they embark on another year of service to our communities, our veterans, and our families. Guide each department president and her officers and our national family as they reach towards that mountaintop of service. A special request, please keep our newly elected President Diane and her officers in your supreme care as they travel this great country to accomplish our share of building toward a better world. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Diana, and you may be seated. The retiring officers will now transfer their pins and ribbons of office to their successors. As the outgoing officers return to their seats, past National President Mary will present them with their ribbons and pins. We will begin the introduction of the newly elected officers with the National Chaplain, Valerie Brown Debro. It's my distinct honor to present to you our 2017-2018 National Chaplain, Evelyn Espinola. I just want to say thank you to everybody here, and it's a blessing to be here. Department of Colorado, thank you. Now it's my pleasure to introduce you our National Historian 2016 2017, Coral May Grout. Thank you so much. It's my honor to present the 2017-2018 National Historian from the Department of North Carolina, Susan Campbell. I want to thank everyone who had this foresight to ask me to run for National Historian, and I want to thank my Department of North Carolina. Thank you.
I'd like to introduce the outgoing Central Division National Vice President, Carol Lee Jungi. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce to you the 2017-2018 Central Division National Vice President, Trish Ward from the Department of Kansas. Thank you so much for this amazing honor. It truly is a dream come true, and I can only say that our mission is my life's work, and it is the members and those who we serve. That means so much and truly own my heart. I would like to thank my amazing husband, Steve Ward, who's watching uh, from home back in the Midwest, and the most amazing committed group of women, the American Legion Auxiliary Department of Kansas. Please stand up and be recognized. Thank you. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the 2016-2017 Eastern Division National Vice President, Patricia Lack. Two shorties here. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce the 2017-2018 Eastern Division National Vice President, Karen Perimsky. Oh my <laughs> Lord. Karen Perimsky from the great Department of New York. Thank you very much, Patty. First of all, I'd like to say congratulations to all the new officers. And I'd like to thank all of you for your commitment to service not self. And I look forward to visiting all the departments in, in the awesome Eastern Division and meeting your, our members. And I, I would like to take a moment to ask our great Department of New York to please stand and be recognized. Thank you all for your support. And would the Eastern Division please stand? Wow. Thank you very much, and God bless America. Forgive me. <laughs> my apologies. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce, no, I think I'm presenting the 2016-2017 Division Vice President from the Northwestern Division, Virginia <laughs> Nelson. You know, my mind just went It is a pleasure to introduce Wyoming's own Peggy Miller, your new Northwestern Division National Vice President. Thank you, Jenny. I would like to thank the Department of Wyoming. Would you like to stand up and be recognized? Can't see out there. Thank you very much for your support. I also would like to have the Northwest Division stand up for recognition. Sounds great out there, thank you. I'd also like to thank all the Legionnaires for all your support. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have this great organization of our American Legion Auxiliary. So thank you very much. Thank you. It is now a pleasure to introduce 2017 2016-2017 Southern Division National Vice President Beverly Mulkey. It is my honor to present to you your 2017-18 Southern Division National Vice President Diane Spencer from the Department of Kentucky. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. It's a great honor and pleasure, and first and foremost, I want to thank God. 
but I would like to ask the Department of Kentucky to please stand and be recognized for all the hard work and support they have given me throughout the year. Department of Kentucky, please stand. All right. Now, I would love the Southern Division. Please stand up and be recognized. <laughs> Thank you. Forgotten country, that's where we are for. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Carrie Fisher, your Western Division National Vice President. I am honored to present to you the 2017-2018 Western Division National Vice President, Nancy Mihalski from the Department of Nevada. Thank you very much. And I know we're small, but we're mighty. Would the Department of Nevada please stand up? I would like to thank them for electing me to be the Western Division National Vice President this year. And would the Western Division, all the members, please stand up. Let me tell you, ladies, we're going to be good this year. Um, I am looking forward to visiting all of you and to meeting more of you and to find out what you're doing for this wonderful, wonderful organization of the American Legion Auxiliary which I love very much. And I would also like to thank the American Legion also, and the Sons of the American Legion who has helped me. Thank you very much. We also have one member on stage who is an officer of the American Legion Auxiliary, who serves as a partner in the national office and will be nominated to continue her service at the National Executive Committee meeting, which will take place tomorrow morning. That's National Secretary Debbie Buckler. Would you please rise? Just stand up. The other national officers are national treasurer, Marta Hedding, she has been at 23 national conventions. This is the first one she's missed because of some illness that's affecting her, so please keep her in your prayer as well, as she's not able to be with us. But she is watching the live streaming from at home, so hi, Marta. Today symbolizes an end as well as a beginning, a renewal as well as a closure. Today, we have witnessed an orderly transfer of the role of the presidency and all of our officers, and together we celebrate our unity. Congratulations to all of you, and our very best wishes for an incredible year of service. I sincerely hope it meets your every expectation. Good luck in all of your endeavors and safe travels. Would the National Vice President, Kathy Dungan, from the Department of Mississippi, please come forward along with National President, Diane Dushek, so Diane can give you your pin and ribbon. And Kathy, when the process is complete, would you have a few words for us?
Madam President, officers, and auxiliary members, I want to thank each of you for giving me the opportunity to serve as your National Vice President. I am humbled and very proud to be a member of this great organization. I thank my family, especially my husband, William, who has supported me every step of the way of this awesome journey. I want to thank my Mississippi Legion family for their support. Would the Department of Mississippi please stand? Thank you, Team Mississippi. I want to thank my dear friend, June Laws, my campaign chairman, who has worked tirelessly for the past couple of years. June, would you please stand? There you are. Thank you and your awesome committee for your support. Now, would the Southern Division please stand? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Madam National President Diane, I'm not going to throw you under the bus. What an honor it is to serve with you this year. I have had the privilege of working with you for many years, getting to know you, sharing laughs, and building our friendship. As you lead this great organization, I wish you safe travels and a wonderful and successful year as we continue to work the mission, dedicating ourselves to serve our veterans, active military, their families, our youth, and our communities. Again, thank you all for this wonderful opportunity to serve. May God bless each one of you. I think it's pretty incredible that the two escorts for our national vice president and our national president are both dual members. <laughs> president Mary, I should say past President Mary, and President Diane, please come to the podium so that Mary can present Diane with her pin and ribbon. My good friend, it is indeed an honor to present to you your gavel, this symbol of authority for our organization. Use it wisely and in the best interest of our organization. Now we will hear from our national president, Diane, with her vision for the coming year. Madam President, you're on. Thank you so much for your show of support. It is certainly a humbling experience to be in this position. There are many th special thank yous and congratulatory wishes to pass around. I've been so fortunate to be in many of your states over the years, starting with regional meetings that were held jointly with the Legion and the Auxiliary back in the 1990s, some of you remember those, and moving to department trainings and mission trainings. And for that reason, I didn't want to just have Central Division stand, but I just wanted to say thank you for all of you because you've always welcomed me into your departments and you've always made me feel like you've put out the welcome mat for me and for that I really appreciate it. 
Would the Department of Wisconsin please stand? Legion, SAL, auxiliary members. You are outstanding. I appreciate your support so much and your continued friendship for all these many years. Thank you very much. Congratulations to President Mary for her great year and to Kathy Dungan as she begins her role as National Vice President. I'd also like just to recognize the National Chairman and the Committee appointees. They've agreed to dedicate this next year of service to the American Legion Auxiliary and to provide support for your department and unit chairman. So many thanks to them. I have a special shout out to past National President Sybil Desitel, who was National President in 1995-96 and appointed me to my first chairmanship. If I'm right, Sybil is actually live tuned and listening to the live streaming as we're going through the convention here. So hi Sybil and thank you very much. There's an old Greek proverb that says, society grows great. When old men plant trees whose shade they know they will never sit in. As an adult, I look back only to realize how many trees and seeds my parents had planted. So let me introduce you to the family. My eligibility is through my father's World War II service. Roley and Vi were active members of the American Legion and the Auxiliary. And in 1954, when the Marcus Ann American Legion Auxiliary was chartered, Mom was the first unit president. I grew up thinking that every family had monthly auxiliary meetings in the dining room. Dads always brought home unemployed veterans and their families and then took the veteran job hunting while the moms would entertain the wife and the children. And then in the 1950s, when there were special projects for community and national security were presented, like the Ground Observer Corps and the civil defense programs, dads always volunteered to get the jobs done and moms took up the slack at home. As time went on, Daddy was one of the department vice commanders and my mom was the district president. So my parents sowed the seeds of servant leadership, demonstrating how important it was to be of service to their neighbors and their community. This year, my brother Phil received his 50-year membership patch. Phil is a Vietnam-era veteran. And he and his wife, Bev, have one son, Joseph, and his family is Chrissy, his wife, and their kids, Alan, Amber, Haley, and Jason. Areas of emphasis this year will be projects where we plant seeds to make a difference in the auxiliary, both today and in the future. The first is the Centennial Strategic Plan, and the second is the American Legion Auxiliary Foundation Endowment Fund. Just this morning, we heard about the Centennial Strategic Plan and how well it's doing. Through the organizational assessment, we all came to realize that we needed to invest in ourselves in order to strengthen the American Legion Auxiliary. So many of your departments have made huge strides in your own strategic plan. And I know some departments are chomping at the bit to get going on phase two. Through goals three and four, We've been planting seeds at a national level to strengthen departments and units and to develop leaders at all levels. And we do so assuming that we'll see some short-term results and we're aware that there are many positive results of these goals that we won't realize in our lifetime. We need to keep the momentum on the strategic plan in the departments, but we also need to push, push the strategic plan down to the unit level and plant seeds of change and success at the grassroots level. The success of the National Strategic Plan is the result of volunteers and staff working side by side on the goals, the strategies, and the initiatives. The accomplishment of the strategic plan at the unit level will be the result of departments and units working together. Again, planting seeds where we may need to be patient in order to see the fruits of our labor. Goal two, developing an internal culture of goodwill. And goal five, with the American Legion build brand loyalty, refer to how we treat one another and how the community and our members perceive both us personally and the organization. 
Gandhi would say, we must be the change we wish to see in the world. For these two goals, we need to plant the seeds of kindness, honesty, and fairness. They seem like little things, probably because our mothers have told us over and over that they were the right things to do. But these are the things that make a huge difference to others. We can follow the golden rule and treat others as we would like to be treated. Or we can follow the platinum rule and treat others as they would like to be treated. We need to serve first, build trust, add value to others, listen to understand, and live our values. We should strive to have people be happy to see us come, not glad to see us go. If we plant our seeds for goals two, three, four, and five, we'll see the results in goal one, which is to enhance membership strength with an increase in helping hands for our mission and increased member satisfaction. With our continued planting of these seeds, we and the future auxiliary members should be able to sit in the shade of the trees that we plant. The second area of emphasis this year in the National President's Fundraiser will be the American Legion Auxiliary Foundation Endowment Fund. Those of you who attended Tuesday morning's auxiliary session, you know without a doubt the foundation is 10 years old this year. I hope you read the foundation's story in the August Auxiliary Magazine. Well, we're going to celebrate those 10 year amazing years. The foundation was formed to assist the auxiliary in carrying out educational, charitable, and exempt purposes of the auxiliary through our 501c3 corporation. As the year progresses, the foundation will continue to distribute the new investment earnings from the Mission Endowment Fund to the auxiliary. To date, almost $40,000 in foundation interest has been distributed back to the auxiliary to fund veterans projects and emergent needs. Monies in an endowment are permanently restricted and remain in the endowment into perpetuity continuing to grow so future generations will benefit from the support of auxiliary programs. Every donation to the endowment, every memorial sent in, every mention of the ALA Foundation endowment in a will or a life insurance policy is another seed sown, another tree planted. In support of the Foundation's 10 years, there will be a pin to celebrate the Foundation You'll be able to get a foundation pin today at the close of convention. It doesn't come without a caveat. I would ask you that in accepting the foundation pin, you would please make a donation to the foundation. And for ease of your use, it just happens that the web address of the National American Legion Auxiliary and the foundation can be found on the back of the pins. You don't need to search for the web address when you're making your donation. We have seeds to sow and trees to plant, so the endowment will be a healthy fund that will provide support for their mission outreach, and future generations of American Legion Auxiliary will be able to sit in the shade of trees and reflect on the insight of the women who started the foundation in 2007. There are also some items that are meant to enhance your member experience this year. First, there will again be six mission trainings each held in conjunction with a junior meeting. This combination of junior meetings and mission trainings held in six areas of the country have increased the reach of the American Legion Auxiliary. The seeds of information that are sown during these trainings will have long-term and far-reaching impact on the auxiliary. Second, <clears throat> we listen to your concerns about the size and complexity of the action plan that changed annually. <clears throat> So this leader, along with the next leaders, partnered with staff to split the action plan into two sections. One part of the plan will be used from 2017 to 2022 and can actually occupy a chapter in the Department Operations Guide. This part of the plan contains suggestions of activities for each program. The second part of the action plan is called the supplement and it contains information that will change on a yearly basis, like names of the chairman and committee members, 
essay contest titles and due dates. This year you may be looking at the plan somewhat strangely as you try to fit the two pieces together, but next year you'll receive only a new supplement because the portion that's for 2017 to 2022 will remain the same, providing continuity in the programs. A third thing, as auxiliary members in the audience learned this morning, ALA Academy 101 and 201 are online and available for auxiliary members to use. Take advantage of these trainings on auxiliary basics and communication, individually or as a group. Junior members will also enjoy the information. And as a real treat, there are more Academy classes being prepared, which we heard about. And fourth, I challenge each of you to re read the organizational access yeah. The organizational assessment that's found on the auxiliary website. It offers such good insight into what our members actually think of the organization. Our mission is outstanding, but we do need to follow the golden rule or the platinum rule. Become involved in the strategic plan in your department and your unit and continue to strengthen the American Legion Auxiliary. I'm looking forward to visiting each of you in your own departments to hear of your successes as you work the mission and to hear of your innovative methods for moving the strategic plan forward in your department. We all need to plant seeds and trees and step out of our comfort zone to nurture ideas so there will be trees in the future. I'll leave us in Eleanor Roosevelt's hands as she said, it's today we must create the world of the future. Thank you. Thank you, President Diane, for those wonderful words and a peek into the future you foresee for the American Legion Auxiliary this coming year. Those members who are present with us today and those at home in their own departments will accept the challenges you've presented and carry us forward through an amazing year. History is a ribbon, always unfurling, and you certainly will make history this coming year as your ribbon continues to unfurl, starting today until the end of your year of service to our veterans, the military, their families, and our communities. It's with great pride and a total singular privilege to introduce our next national commander, if elected later tomorrow, our very first female ever to serve in that capacity. Also, also from the great department of Wisconsin, one who states that she will be the first ever national commander installed in two inch heels. Please welcome Denise Rohan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please be seated. President Diane, officers past and present, guests, my fellow Legion family members. Um, when I made that statement about being the first national commander to be installed in two-inch heels, I was told later that there may have been another national commander that was installed in two-inch heels. I don't know who that was, though. And there's a good chance I'm not going to get to do that because of the fall that I took recently. But. What an honor, and I kind of feel like this might be a little bit of a dress rehearsal for tomorrow. But over the last 30-some years that I've been a member of the American Legion family of Wisconsin, I've seen Diane, President Diane, up and down the hallways at our conventions and our meetings. And I've always looked up to her as a prime example of a perfect auxiliary member. 
And as the years have progressed into my being a candidate for national commander, and I started figuring out that my national president was going to be a woman that I have admired for so many years, I just feel so honored and thrilled to have that opportunity to serve alongside of Diane. And are also our Sons of the American Legion Commander, Danny. Because with a the theme of family first, I do want to make sure that the entire American Legion family works together. It's the American Legion, our American Legion Auxiliary, the Sons of the American Legion, and our American Legion Riders. Because together, we make fantastic things happen across this entire nation. Now, as you've sat in your meetings this past week and your, your convention sessions, I hope that each and every one of you were filled with a sense of pride, a sense of pride knowing that you are making a difference in the lives of our veterans, their families, and our communities. Because you see, every moment that you spend on American Legion family activities is a statement of faith. It's a statement that you believe in our organization, you believe in our four pillars, and you believe in what we stand for. And that is making sure that we have a strong national defense, we're taking care of our veterans and making sure that their rehabilitation goes smoothly. You're taking care of teaching our children about Americanism, and making sure that our children and youth, as they grow up, that they know that they live in a safe nation and that they are part of what America is all about. So as you travel home, I hope you have safe travels home from this convention. But we are not in Las Vegas. We are in Reno. And what happens in Reno does not have to stay here in Reno. Please, go home and share everything that you learned. Share all of the fantastic things that the American Legion family is doing. Share it all and know that you have the gratitude of a very grateful nation for everything that you do. God bless each and every one of you. And thank you for always putting our families first. Thank you. It's rather unusual to have the aide to the national commander be your husband. And I'd like to introduce her husband, Mike Rohan. We certainly want to thank Denise and wish her well. It's going to be an outstanding year for her, I'm sure, as well. And we wish her good luck, as always. Now it's my pleasure to introduce an outstanding member of the Department of Wisconsin, Joyce Endress, a past department president and Diane's campaign manager, to introduce those special guests that are here today. Joyce? Thank you, Jan. It's my pleasure to introduce other members of Wisconsin and the National SAL Detachment Commander. They're here to bring greetings and wishes, best wishes to President Diane. So first, we'll have National Sons of the American Legion Detachment Commander, Danny Smith. Well, good afternoon. That's what I like, enthusiasm. We, we, need to, we need to get enthusiastic about this organization. I want to thank you for those kind words and that uh, warm introduction and that, especially that warm welcome. But to, to be honest with all of you, I should stand and applaud you folks for what you do for our veterans, our children and youth, and our communities. What you drew is truly amazing. National President Dusick, past National President Davis, national officers and staff, department officers, delegates, 
alternates, distinguished individuals and guests to this convention. Congratulations on a great year. The record shows that uh, you did some fantastic work and I hope everyone understands that uh, what you do does make a difference in someone's life, no matter how small that donation is or how many hours you serve. Every one of those dollars and every one of those hours is important and it makes a difference in someone's life. And I've had the opportunity to read President Diane's resume and I know that she will serve the organization and you well as your national president. You know, we always hear about mutual helpfulness and we always hear about the American Legion family. And that's really what it should be all about. And that's what this year is going to be about. We're going to work together as family to promote, to promote those ideals and principles on which the American Legion was founded and as stated in our respective preambles. And I would like to thank all of you and show my sincere appreciation for your service to those words that are in your preamble to your American Legion Auxiliary Constitution. To participate in and contribute to the accomplishment of the aims and purpose of the American Legion. You know, the American Legion Auxiliary has been doing that for nearly 100 years. Lending, hand, lending a hand and supporting the American Legion and creating programs of your own. And I'm going to tell you this, no one does it better. You know, you've stepped up and taken on those projects that the American Legion does not take on or maybe they can't take on, and it's made a difference. You exemplify mutual helpfulness, and it is appreciated. You serve the veterans, you serve your children, and you serve your communities. And it makes a difference, and I've seen that difference. I've seen the smiles on the faces of those that you serve. And over the years, I'm sure you've created billions and billions of smiles. And to me, that is the truest measure of success. And I've seen them, and I know that you've seen them. And there's nothing more gratifying than a thank you and a smile from some that we, someone that we've been able to serve. It's been a busy day, it's been a long week, and I know that uh, you have plenty to do. So I'm gonna leave you with this thought. Alone we are but one voice. Together, however, we create the thunder of the world's largest veteran service organization, the American Legion family. God bless all of you, God bless the United States of America, and God bless the American Legion Auxiliary. Remember, together we can, and together we will make a difference. Thank you all very much. Wisconsin American Legion family is very proud to work together very well and we're happy to present the rest from our Wisconsin contingent. Wisconsin's American Legion Auxiliary Department President who serves the American Legion Auxiliary mission with smiles and goodwill, I present you Bonnie, President Bonnie Tishkupchek. Madam National President, it's a great honor to bring remarks from your department. There is nothing cheesy in you being the sixth national president from Wisconsin. I believe that Wisconsin is giving up the cream at the top this year. President Diane, we know from experience that your year will be very positive and fun. Our wish for you is to have a great year with safe travels as you promote our mission of service, not self. Just remember, we expect you, and hopefully Commander Denise, back in a year, to continue your great work in Wisconsin. In fact, 
I bet your unit is counting on you to come back for your annual tradition of mopping the floor after your fundraiser. <laughs> yes, Wisconsin is truly proud of our double Ds and wish them all the best. Next, we'll have Wisconsin's American Legion Department Commander who served in the Army and is a dual member of the American Legion and the American Legion Auxiliary, Commander Laurel M. Kuhl. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. It's a great group. Did you ever stand, whenever you can get up here and listen to the national anthem done by a group like you guys, or the, the Pledge of Allegiance, it's just, it brings tears to my eyes. It was amazing. Thank you for that. President Diane, congratulations. Wisconsin is very, very proud of our Legion family and our national lead leadership, and I see that Denise had to run. But our national leaders, our NEC men, our national presidents, our national, now national commander, we're so very proud of our family. This next year will be a testament of how well the Wisconsin American family actually works together. Our national organization is very blessed and very fortunate to have these two ladies in charge of, of the Auxiliary and the American Legion. Our American Legion family is truly, truly blessed. And I can't say enough how important it is, all the work that we do. I look forward to working with Bonnie this year, my president Bonnie, and she's a hoot. But, but I just want to say God bless you in 2018. Thank you, and we are very, very proud of you. Next, we'll have Wisconsin's first elected National Executive Committee woman who had spark to always serve, NEC Laura Colto. Hello there. President Diane, it's so awesome to say. It is my honor and distinct pleasure as the first elected National Executive Committee woman for the Department of Wisconsin in the, uh, to bring greetings in the, on behalf of our entire American Legion family in Wisconsin. This is a momentous year for our department as both our National President Diane and National Commander Denise are from our great state and will lead our organizations with honor, integrity, and certainly a lot of fun thrown in too. As we make membership meaningful and put family first, we will remain the largest patriotic service organization in the world. Congratulations, Diane. Thank you. Next, we'll have our Wisconsin National Executive Committee men who served our country as a Marine, is a past department commander, an active American Legion rider, National Executive Committee men, Ken Rhino Rennish. And I was her commander too. Joyce and I were, we've been running mates for a long time. She kept me out of some trouble, but not all of it. Good afternoon, President Diane, past national presidents, national officers, and delegates to this convention. Along with others, I bring you greetings from the great department of Wisconsin. Sometimes the good Lord puts you in a special place at a special time. This is definitely one of those times for our department, and more specifically, Diane. 
Most lay people outside these halls don't understand the commitment that it takes, the commitment that Diane has undertaken these many, many years. A higher calling, reaching out to care for people you may not know, may never meet, but have to know they are out there. Our great state has two fine ladies, as has already been mentioned, playing major roles in the Legion family this coming year. Only twice in history before has the national commander and the national president been from the same department. And as we all know, at no time were they both women. Diane is carrying on the legacy of Wisconsin women, serving as she will be the sixth from Wisconsin to serve as your president, with the first being back in 1926-27. Your, your sixth president was from the Department of Wisconsin. I think that's very ironic. The other thing I found out uh, was that you ladies did not have a first name until 1980. It was always then, it was always Mrs. J.W. McCauley, Mrs. So I don't know what happened in 1980, something in the water, I don't know. But um, I will close with a personal sincere thanks for all that you do and a reassurance that your choice, Diane, will leave your great organization better than she found it. Thank you and God bless. Next, we'll have Wisconsin American Legion Rider, President, a past department commander, and served as an Army Vietnam era veteran, Al Richards. Good afternoon. It is really an honor to be here. Uh, like Denise said, uh, Diane and I are from the uh, same district back home, and I've seen this lady always showing great grace and honor and dedication, so I'm really humbled to be here, and congratulations, President Diane. Uh, I am uh, the president of the American Legion Riders, which I consider uh, really uh, example of the American Legion family. I mentioned at our state convention that the uh, riders in Wisconsin, we have about 800 members, and three of them are actually on active duty right now, and we have about a half a dozen who have uh, children, a uh, son or a daughter on active duty. About 65 are SAL members, but over 100 of our members are auxiliary. Do we have any writers out there right now? All right, great. That's why I think it's, it's really great uh, to have the family together, to congratulate uh, Diane on her presidency. Uh, of course, we have President Bonnie and Commander Laurel, and with any luck, tomorrow, I hear it's going to be close, but with any luck, Denise will be <laughs> national commander. Uh, wait a minute. I think the ladies are taking over. We began with the Sons of the American Legion, and now we will end our greetings with the Wisconsin immediate past, two-year term, Sons of the American Legion Depart Detachment Commander, Mike Kolzmanberger. <clears throat> greetings, everyone. I want to thank each and every one of you for attending this national convention. I really want to thank you on behalf of the Detachment of Wisconsin for every veteran for their service. And <clears throat> Mary, I really want to thank you for the impression you made upon the detachment when we all got together and made blankets. There, that's right. <clears throat> but <clears throat> what I really want to give you is the message of a ripple. What kind of ripple are you guys putting out? Is it a positive ripple or a negative ripple? Where do that ripple lands? Where do, how it affects people? We never know. Diane, you've been doing this for 50 years plus, 
and you've been putting out a positive ripple and how that ripple affected somebody else and bounced back and turned into another positive ripple. And it goes on and on. Right now we have 2,000 plus people here and we're gonna put out 2,000 more positive ripples. Our goals and achievements is only our end of our imagination. Where do we want to go? Where do we want to strive? You guys are right there around the corner also for your 100th anniversary. It's up to you if you want to make a difference. I always told everybody one person can make a difference. Are you that one person to make a difference in the American Legion? To make a difference in a veteran's life, giving them a wheelchair, electric motorized wheelchair, are you the one that made a difference when you handed a Josh dog to a young child as her father was getting deployed? Are you the one that made a difference? That's up to you. So with that, I have full confidence you will make a difference and you are that one person. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, and I'd like to again thank Diane and tell her congratulations and we know we're going to, you're going to have a wonderful year and as you can tell by these wonderful greetings, the w Department of Wisconsin is strongly behind your leadership. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Joyce, and all of our wonderful guests from Wisconsin. I'm sure we are all bursting with pride as this special lady begins this memorable year as national president. It's my privilege and honor to welcome past President Mary into the ranks of past national presidents and to thank her from the bottom of our hearts for this very special year of service and for everything she's accomplished. It was an in, indeed an incredible year of service and one that leaves us with rich memories of that service. Past President Mary, would you please come forward for some special presentations? Presenting past National President Mary with her past president's pen will be past National President Sharon Knatzer from the Department of Illinois. Mary, my friend. Yes, ma'am. We've come a long way, baby. You bet. <laughs> I hope for you a future full of memories, a future full of friends, but most of all, our friendship to continue to grow as you join the ranks of past national president. And Emma asked me also to say, as she does the ribbon, that she has lots of memories to share, but was afraid that she would not make it through <laughs> because of the memories in her department that she has of Mary from the very beginning of when she met you and when you were department secretary. So Mary, I pin this over your heart, wear it proudly, and always remember that we loved you and you had a great year, honey. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm not gonna feel. I'm not gonna pin it because it won't go through, okay? Also with us today to present President Mary with her ribbon is Emma Peoples, past national chaplain from the Department of Washington. Past National President Carlene Ashworth from the Department of Texas will present her stand of colors. Flag bearers for the presentation are Lorna Ledgeshuk and Elaine Roach, also from the Department of Washington. Carlene?
Madam retiring national president and dear friend Mary, will you please take your rightful place between these grand and glorious colors under which you have served. I am very honored to have been asked to present them to you, Mary. As you stand between these two standards, which you have served so loyally, may they always hold a place of honor in your heart. These beautiful colors stood in your national office to welcome and motivate you during your year as national president. Your beautiful ALA pin, worn by members all over the world, exemplifies your belief in the vision of our great organization. I know through your travels that you have made a difference to our veterans, for our troops, for our youth, and for our communities. You have touched the hearts of many. Your love of the American Legion Auxiliary, the American Legion family, and your willingness and enthusiastic determination to serve and challenge new programs continues to propel us forward to meet the needs of the times and of our membership. You have had a remarkable year, one that will live in your memory forever, just as it will live in the memories of those who have served with you this year. These colors under which you have served will always be a special part of those memories. To your right stand the stars and stripes today. There is no other banner in the world as great as this star-spangled banner. It controls the strong and protects the weak. The white is for purity, the red for valor, and the blue is for justice. When you put them all together, they become the flag of the greatest country in the world. To your left stands the banner of your office as National President of the American Legion Auxiliary, where the emblem of our organization shines. It stands for justice, freedom, democracy, and loyalty. I know your heart swells with pride each time you have greeted this emblem throughout your travels. It is with great pride that I present these colors to you. Take them home to Washington, where I know they will have a special place of honor in your home and in your heart. With these colors, you will be taking home precious memories and lasting friendships. Honor and cherish them always with God's richest blessing. We give them to you with deep affection and prayers as you hold fast to the memory of your year. I know your wonderful family will be glad to have you back home again. Mary, as retiring national president, you may now please take your seat and your place as a past national president of the greatest patriotic organization ever. Again, I want to extend my sincerest thanks to you for a job well done. Thank you all for your inspiring presentations. As the color bearers return the flags to the standards, and you can be seated, okay? I just want to say as you leave the hall today, please wait until all the dignitaries on stage are in the back of the hall. When you exit today, you will have an opportunity to get a ALA Foundation pin, as our president has requested, and asks you to consider giving a donation to the foundation. Also, there will be information available regarding the National President's homecoming. You will find some of our ladies from Wisconsin with the red scarves on, and they will be distributing them. President Mary, I return your gavel so that you can close your convention. I wish for you the most successful year filled with opportunities serving our veterans, their families, and our communities. Congratulations and my sincere best wishes. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for all your love and support. I look forward to joining the past national presidents as the junior member. This has been a journey to remember. This year will be recorded as a chapter of my life of service 
to the greatest organization one can be privileged to belong. While milestones like serving as national president are important to remember, we must celebrate every day for the difference we are making in the lives of veterans, their families, and individuals in our communities, as well as our active duty military. I believe National President Diane and her officers are off to a great beginning in planning a year of fulfilling our mission and strongly supporting our motto, service not self. With the retiring officers, the newly elected officers, the family and platform guests of the national president be retired along with the colors of the Wisconsin delegation. Please rise. The National Chaplain, Valerie Brown DeBro will give the benediction. Upon completion, the National President's pages will retire the colors. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for this entire year of blessings for our leaderships. Father, we thank you for a beautiful convention 
as our preamble says, for God and country, we serve them well. We thank you for the blessings of each and every officer that served as we depart from this place, but not your presence. We thank you for the accomplishments that we were able to achieve in you as our steps are already ordered. As I came in with the opening scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into our own understanding, but to acknowledge you in all our ways and you shall direct our path. So as you're continuously directing, as we're seeking and asking, we just thank you for opening the doors. As we go forth today, Father, we just thank you for our organization, the American Legion family, serving our veterans, their families, and our community. In your holy name we pray, amen. Will the Sergeant at Arms and the Assistant Sergeant at Arms please come forward to retire the colors? This 97th Convention of the American Legion Auxiliary is now adjourned. Thank you all for attending and safe travels until we meet again.